Welcome to In Focus. I'm Anthony Moreno. This fall, Western New Mexico University is launching a new program aimed at strengthening communication between families, health industry professionals, and social service groups. Here to tell us more about the new program is Dr. Benjamin Jenkins, Director of the Rehabilitation Services and Community Health Worker Programs in Western New Mexico University School of Nursing and Allied Health. Ben, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this is a new program, so could you start off by sharing what the program is and what it's about? Sure. This is a certificate program that we're rolling out in our Deming campus uh, to help train community health workers or um, promotores, as, as they were previously known. And uh, in this two semester program, students will gain a variety of training that deals with uh, all of the various aspects to do with community health um, to, and then they can become certified at the state level and there's a growing number of jobs available for these individuals, so we're really excited about it. Well, I want to continue talking more about this, but first I'd like to know a little bit more about your background, your history. Uh, what are you bringing as director of this program? Sure. Um, so I have my doctorate in rehabilitation counseling education, uh, which I received uh, in Southern Texas at the University of Texas Pan American. And, uh, like where we live now, uh, it is also a frontier area. So I gained a real appreciation there for the needs of these uh, border frontier areas, as well as um, for um, minority populations. And so I really came to enjoy that and now uh, at Western New Mexico University, I've had the opportunity to interact a lot with a lot of the different uh, organizations and programs that try to promote overall better well-being for individuals in our community. Was there a specific reason why the program is located in Deming? Did the university uh, specify um, why Deming was the location for that program? Yeah, actually that was, th that was kind of a strategic move um, for us because uh, Deming is kind of centrally located um, near to um, Las Cruces, El Paso, but also um, the border of Mexico. And being in that, in that region, the, uh, we felt like we would be able to attract more people to this program that would be interested in helping provide um, health care services in their local community. And we figure that people are going to be um, more community minded. You see, the community health worker is, isn't anything new. Um, in fact, it's been known for decades, as I mentioned before, as promotores. Um, which is, if you can explain. Which is literally um, health promoters. And so, uh, you know, we live in the most medically underserved state in the nation. Um, also, our state has some of the highest poverty rates. And so, with that, um, people find themselves unable to find resources, but yet for years they have been, and they've been turning to these promotores uh, to get the help that they need. Now, uh, with state legislation, uh, we have begun to legitimize their services, or better yet, to recognize um, the work that they, that they do. Um, and so we are with this location, going back to your question, this location in Deming um, has really been strategic because we feel like at least to start, um, that's the place where we feel like we're gonna get the best response where um, people there are going to um, understand best what we're, what we're doing. And I think we can make a really great impact in this region 
from our Deming campus. What do you tell prospective students who are about to enter college and thinking about entering this program? What are some of the things you tell them about what to expect uh, should they decide to invest in an education and take this program? Sure, well that's a, that's a great question. First of all, the program isn't, this program isn't for college credit. And so this is a program that anybody can enter into, preferably with a high school degree. Um, and it's a short-term uh, certificate program. Um, and so somebody who is maybe not sure they want to invest uh, their time, energy, and resources into college just yet, this is a great step for them to take, um, especially if they're interested in um, improving the uh, well-being of people in their community. What are they going to learn? You know, that's, a, that's also a really good question. Um, they'll learn things like um, healthcare coaching. They'll also learn things like taking blood pressure. Okay, I want to stop you right there. What's yeah. healthcare coaching? What is, <laughs> what, what is healthcare coaching? I, you know, when you say coach, I think of like, you know, somebody at the whistle or Tony Robbins, perhaps a life coach, but what's healthcare coaching? Yes, just that. That's what we hope to see. Um, maybe not so much the whistle, um, but, you know, definitely inspiring people to live healthy lives. So that includes setting goals um, and assessing y your healthcare challenges or the environmental challenges that, that you may have. Um, you know, I, I think in this region, I know at least since I moved to the region, I know that I've learned to eat a few too many tortillas. And so, uh, it may be, you know, instead of using the tortilla as a fork, use a fork and eat fewer tortillas. That's something that, it, that a health coach might do. But say, for example, um, you've been recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Man, there's a lot of changes that you have to make, and that's super overwhelming for not only you, but also for your family. And so a community health worker can come to your home and assess what are, you, what are you eating or what's your home situation like? Um, why do you eat the way that you do? What are some other things that you can do to be healthy? Um, what are some things that we can do to get you to exercise? I doubt that if you haven't exercised for years, I doubt that tomorrow you're gonna start hitting the gym every day and lose 30 pounds. And so having somebody else there to help you assess set those goals and attain those goals can be a real relief to you as an individual and help you make uh, huge strides. Now, what type of role, how important is the community health worker in the whole healthcare industry? You know, how do they bridge that gap between, you know, health professionals and you know social service organizations and and things like that what type of role and how important is that role well it you kind of answered your own question there uh, in fact the community health worker and this is what i love so much about it is that it literally is that bridge uh, sometimes especially for people who who live in more remote communities or uh, are part of a of a culture that doesn't readily embrace um, healthcare professionals, sometimes that healthcare is a little bit out of reach. So the community health worker or the health promoters um, are going to help those individuals make that bridge, um, understand how to, um, how to get um, healthcare coverage, how to know what programs are available both in your community, so maybe municipal, type uh, uh, community clinics, things like that, um, to state and national programs. So the, these community health workers are going to be able to help them to sometimes make that big step that may be needed. But more importantly, they're going to help people in their community through education and just by being a good neighbor and friend and family member who has some training to just be healthier in general. 
and reduce this growing need for health care, keep people out of the ER um, for problems that can be easily prevented with a little bit of education. Somebody gets uh, this certificate to become a community health worker. Can they use that certificate across the state and is it recognized outside of the state? So uh, definitely across the state. Um, now other, other states are embracing this. In fact, we're not the first state to recognize a community health worker. Uh, much of what has been done at the state level to generate this certificate was gained from things that we learned uh, from Texas, for example. Texas has a great community health worker network. Um, and uh, it's worked great for them. It's working even perhaps better for us so far. Now, I don't think it's much of a secret to our audience that New Mexico has an issue with having enough uh, healthcare practitioners across the board. Um, do you have any concerns about the stress that a community health worker may be having currently? If you know this program is obviously needed, um, are there too few community health workers right now in the state? Oh, absolutely. As I said, um, these these promotorias have have been around for a very long time, and a lot of times they find themselves working against the system because they're not really recognized. And so part of what we're doing is we're, we're recognizing that. In fact, those who have, uh, who have been practicing for years, they can come in and they can take this, this training program um, and then they become legitimized. And there are a number of, of uh, uh, healthcare entities within our state that will, that will hire them. And, uh, and they are ecstatic about the work that is being done and the type of progress that people are making in their, in their lifestyle. It seems like this may be some fulfilling work, you know, to help people out, to help change their lives for uh, the better, to have a healthier life, to educate, help educate people about the resources that are out there. I'm curious about the person who's the worker, the person who is going through the program and becomes a professional community health worker. Um, you mentioned that they currently aren't recognized in your words as yet, you know, perhaps other healthcare professionals. However, I would imagine dealing with the population of people who are struggling with various health issues, you know, that's obviously personal work. Do you, in your program, do you talk about the need for self-care uh, while you're doing this this type of work. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's really at the heart of this, is that as community health workers, we commit ourselves to healthier lifestyles, and that includes taking care of ourselves. And when we do that, look at what happens. Let's say you have a a single mother of of four who has developed a, some sort of a chronic condition, chances are she's not gonna take care of herself. She's going to take care of her family first and not get the care that she needs. A community health worker is gonna understand that. They're gonna understand the need to take care of oneself. And when you take care of yourself, it's amazing how capable you are of helping take care of others. Now we're almost out of time, but I was wondering if you could tell our audience how they can learn more information about the program if they are interested. Sure, uh, they can uh, contact our Deming campus um, to get more information about it. Um, they can also see our website. Uh, it is alliedhealth.wnmu.edu slash chw and there will be constantly updated information there. Um, or they can contact me. My email is benjamin.jenkins at wnmu.edu. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Benjamin Jenkins, for joining us on In Focus. Thank you, Anthony. And we want to thank you for joining us. I'm Anthony Morneau.